N.T. Wright takes Brian Walsh's four worldview questions and adds a fifth. These worldview questions are if you, basically everybody in the world is answering, has an answer for these five questions, whether they're explicit about it or it's just implicitly the lens through which they're viewing the world. And those questions are, who are we? Where are we? So who, who am I? Who are we? Where are we? What, what's, what's going on? What's wrong? Everybody understands there's something wrong with the world. In our present context, we see that as well. Everybody's got an, a different answer, it seems, to what exactly is wrong with the world, which then leads to different solutions. What's the solution? What's the fix? And N.T. Wright adds that fifth, what time is it? What are we supposed to do? What's our role to play in the midst of it? And so everybody has an answer to these questions that they explicitly or implicitly live in. And one of the things for us to do in evangelism is to help people to draw out for people what their actual answers to those questions are and, and realize that what they just see is it's just the way it is are actually answers to this question. And what the Christian faith is, as we want to, to share the Christian faith with people, is it's a story that has a specific set of answers to these questions. That the answers come from, are always come from the story that we tell of the world. And one way that we found to be helpful in explaining the story that the Bible tells that gives answers to these questions is with these six symbols. So a down arrow, an X, an arrow going forward, a cross, another forward arrow, and finally a down arrow. This would be the six acts of the biblical story that Mike Goheen and Craig Bartholomew talk about in their book, Drama of Scripture. The first arrow is, you'll see that in uh, Genesis one and two, it's creation. And so in the beginning, God creates the world good and right and beautiful. And he creates human beings with a job to do, to be fruitful, to multiply, subdue the earth, there to be his vice regents under his ultimate care. And so who are we? We're God's image bearers uh, with a job to do, to be fruitful, to multiply, to subdue God's earth, to live. Where are we? We are in God's creation. So we are in God's world. We are, who are we? We are the creatures. And where are we? We're in God's creation. He is the creator. What's wrong? What's wrong is in Genesis 3 through 11 of the biblical story, we have the rebellion. That there's a cosmic rebellion by the first people against the living God, their Lord. And in Genesis 3, they rebel against him. And it goes downhill from there. You have murder and polygamy in the next chapter, all the way to every inclination of their hearts is always evil. And continually, they're acting on violence against each other. And God floods the world, and it ends with the Tower of Babel. The Bible could end right there in Genesis, uh, after Genesis 11, as a tragedy. But it doesn't end there. There is a promise. And the promise is the whole rest of the Old Testament, starting in Genesis 12 with the promise to abraham that god is going to call people the way god is going to fix his creation the way god is going to to this this creation project that has gone wrong in the rebellion and seems like it could be a tragedy the way that god is going to fix that is through one particular people to be blessed to be a blessing to the whole world and so he calls them in genesis 12 on to malachi but those people, they continue to rebel against God as well. And they don't fulfill their calling uh, to be blessed, to be a blessing. And so the fourth act that's symbolized by the cross is redemption. And that the, the hero of the story is Jesus. He comes and he is the one true faithful Israelite, the one true child of Abraham that uh, is faithful. And through him, the blessing is going to come to the nations, to the whole earth. And so this is... Uh, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you see the story of redemption there. And that symbolizes not just his death, but his life, death, and resurrection, and the sending of the Spirit, the good news of the redemption of the world by Jesus Christ. And he then, his redemption and his resurrection, watch this, it secures uh, the restoration of all things. The restoration and so just as there was a down arrow at the beginning, God came down, so to speak. In the end, Jesus returns and will restore all things. And God's creation project will once again be underway and be, uh, and be fulfilled. And so we see that in Revelation 21 and 22. We see that restoration. 
But in the meanwhile, his resurrection, the resurrection of Jesus has assured, it's the first fruits, Paul says, of the final restoration or new creation, Act 6. But in the meantime, there's a fifth act. There's this act that we find ourselves in of the church, that Jesus, the resurrected Lord, the one through whom all of creation is being healed and all the nations are coming to under the blessing of God, he sends a people out. He doesn't write a book. He doesn't just give some knowledge, secret knowledge, but he sends a people out to be a witness of the good news of what Jesus has done, to share that and to speak that and to tell the nations. And they're to, to demonstrate and to declare the good news of the gospel. And so what's wrong is the rebellion. What's the solution? Jesus, his redemption and final restoration. And what time is it? We find ourselves right now in the midst of the church age as these people. So who are we? Where are we? We are here trying to find our role and play our role in the midst of God's story.